Hello and welcome back to Learning with Yagman X. Today I'll take you through how to add animation into your 3D scenes using rotoscoping. I've always been inspired by traditional frame by frame animation and I find there's something really soothing about how the imperfections peek through as it flickers throughout each of its frames. As I started to endeavor into creating cinematics in Unreal Engine, I started to realize that I could get a similar look using rotoscope animation. And the more that I've used it, the more I actually adore the way that it looks. What is rotoscope animation? Rotoscope animation describes the process of creating animated sequences by tracing over live action footage frame by frame. And why use rotoscope animation? This offers an animation style that is stylized and unique while also being relatively simple to achieve by anyone who has the patience to see it through. Even if you truly believe that you lack any artistic skill, then you too could achieve animation through this approach. And I'm going to share with you how I use rotoscope animation in my Unreal Engine projects step by step. I also want to clarify that even though I'm using Unreal Engine for this tutorial, the steps can still be applicable for other game engines or 3D projects. Step one is to plan your animation. When planning where rotoscope animation would be best to use within your project, do keep in mind that it is quite a lengthy process, so the best rotoscope animations are ones that are short and easily loopable. The first frame of the animation should match up with the last frame so that it can smoothly transition throughout the whole movement when put on a loop. Because of this, I usually come up with really basic actions that I can put on a loop throughout my 3D scene. So this might be somebody sipping a cup of coffee, somebody walking on the spot, a person playing a musical instrument, a bird flapping its wings. You get the point. Step two, figure out your camera angle. So the rotoscope animations will be imported into your 3D environment as a 2D sprite animation. Therefore, it will only be viewable from the front or the back. It's not a 3D object. Because of this, it's vital that you create your animation to fit the correct angle within your scene. This is especially if you have fixed cameras throughout your project. So if you're making a cinematic, music video, film, whatever it is, or a fixed camera video game. To do this, you can simply line up your camera to the scenes where you want the animation to play and take a photo of this angle so that you can use this as reference when creating it. To take a high resolution screenshot in Unreal Engine, you can press F9 or use the high resolution screenshot tool within the viewport options. But if you're unsure what angle you will be using for your animations, then do not worry. Just make sure to film your animations from front on and you can make sure that the 2D sprite will always look at your camera or your player. Step three, film your animations. Now it's time to get some reference for your rotoscope animation by filming the actions that you need. If you took screenshots of your 3D scene as reference, then try to match up the scene as best as possible so that when you film your action, it will be at the correct angle for your scene. Film each action separately and try to make sure they're not too long. You will thank yourself in the next step. Trust me. And don't forget to keep in mind that the action needs to loop from beginning to end. So try to make sure the end of the action will line up with the beginning. The best thing about this is that you only need your footage to use as a reference to create your animation. So you don't need to go out and buy a fancy camera. You can simply use your phone. Just ensure that your camera is stationary to make sure that each frame of your action lines up perfectly with the other. You can invest in a phone tripod pod for this, which I find very useful. Step four, draw over your videos in Photoshop. Now it's time to art. <laughs> Import your reference video into the animation timeline of Photoshop. When this is imported, you can use it as reference to draw over in a transparent new layer. Skim over the video every few frames and keep creating a new layer per chosen frame to draw onto. The more new layers you create and the closer the frames are to one another, the smoother your animation will be. And as you create more and more layers, you'll slowly start to see your animation come to life. Don't forget, 
that we must have the end frame loop nicely with the first frame and make sure that they're all the same canvas size. This can be extremely time consuming, but it all depends on how much time you'd like to spend on your animation. For my projects, I simply draw a thick white line over the outline and the details of my reference. I like to use white so that I can easily manipulate the color once I import it into a game engine. Through this method of drawing every few frames, it also allows me more creative freedom to add things into the animation that weren't necessarily there in the reference footage, such as steam coming from a hot coffee mug, glittering effects, particles, bugs coming from a stinky dog, if you want to do that. <laughs> Overall, I find this step very therapeutic. I know not everyone will, but I do. And it's extremely rewarding to see your animation come to life. Step five, export as a sprite sheet. Once you're happy with your animation, you'll then need to export this as a sprite sheet to use in Unreal Engine. This feature actually isn't in built into Photoshop, so you'll have to add a Photoshop script yourself so you can do this. I put a link in the description where you can find a Photoshop script and it's called Layers to Sprite Sheet. Once you've downloaded this, you can then put it into your program files, Adobe, Photoshop, presets, scripts folder, and then close and reopen your Photoshop to make sure that the script is accessible for you. It's good practice to make a duplicate of your Photoshop file here, just in case you need to go back in the future and make further changes to the original file before you turn it into a sprite sheet. Within your duplicate Photoshop file, delete the timeline so that all of your layers will be active on top of one another. It should look like one big squiggly mess. Then delete the video and background layer, leaving only the layers that you want to be included into the sprite sheet. Select all of the layers and go into File, Scripts, and choose Layers to Sprite Sheet. Insert how many sprites per row you'll need, and this will depend on how many image layers the animation has. If you have an odd number of image layers, then I suggest you have one sprite per row, so it will just be a long column of images with no blank spaces. It will also warn you if there will be any blank spaces, depending on how many sprites per row you chose. And this is great because we do not want blank spaces in our sprite sheet. This will mean that the animation will have one blank space as a frame in its animation. So that means that it will just become invisible for a frame, which is not good. Step six, import your sprite sheet into Unreal Engine. To import your new sprite sheet into Unreal Engine, you simply drag and drop your sprite sheet image. Once doing so, it will be imported as a texture. To set up my textures, I use these settings. I put lossy compression amount at its lowest so that it will have the best image quality, even though it is the largest file, so beware of that. And I untick sRGB to make sure that the sprite is transparent once we turn it into a material. Step seven, create the animation within a material. I personally use materials to handle my sprite animations because it allows me more control over things such as speed and color. When creating my material, I will always create a master material that will hold adjustable parameters that I can adjust through material instances when I create multiples animations. Yes. <laughs> this master material is set up as such. The material domain uses surface for use on a 3D material. If you want to use the rotoscope animation for UI, you can also change this to user interface. I use a masked blend mode so that the material will be transparent. And I also take two-sided to ensure that the material can be viewed by both sides if this is needed. You might not need this. Within a material, you can create material parameters that can be adjusted in real time without having to recompile the material. This makes it very easy for us to keep the same master material set up while making the appropriate adjustments for each of its material instances. When using a material parameter, you can change its name within its details panel so that it's easily recognizable for you when it comes to adjusting that parameter. The flipbook node is what drives the animation. So I use scalar parameter values for 
Speed, which is a constant parameter that gets multiplied by the time node, and then gets plugged into the animation phase input in the flipbook node. Row number, which gets input into the number of rows input in the flipbook node. And column number, which gets input into the number of columns input. The flipbook UV's output is then fed into a texture sample parameter 2D, which will be set to the sprite sheet. I often hook the output of this to a multiply node with a vector parameter so that I can use this to set a color that can override the base color of the sprite texture if needed. Hence why I said I draw in white because it's easy to override this white color with a multiply of pink, purple, green, yellow, whatever color you want it to be. The RGB output of your texture sample parameter 2D gets fed into the base color, and I also added mine into the emissive color. I'm not sure why I did that. I don't think I had to do that. Did I have to do that? <laughs> and use the alpha output for the opacity mask input of the material to set the transparency. Once this is set up, you can create material instances of this master material to adjust the parameters for each instance. To do this, you simply right click on the master material and choose create material instance. If you followed my material walkthrough, then the parameter values that you should have available to you are speed, which is the speed the flipbook will run through the sprite sheet, row number, which is the amount of rows the sprite sheet has, column number, the amount of columns the sprite sheet has, texture, which is the sprite sheet to use, and color, the adjustable color of the sprite. Step eight, getting your animation into your 3D scene. To insert this into your 3D scene, you can simply add a plane into your map by choosing plane from within the place actors window under shapes. Set this plane to use your material. Ta-da! It's playing! It even plays in the editor, which is really great because you can see it without having to run your game. That method works great when you have fixed camera angles. However, you might want to use this method in a first person game where the player controls the camera and you want to make sure that they will always see your animation from front on to not break the illusion. Well, don't worry, I've thought of this too. In this case, you can create a blueprint that holds your plane component, which has your animation as its material. And within this blueprint, you can set the actor to rotate upon its Z axis to follow the camera on tick. I'd suggest turning tick on or off when you need it so that it's more performant, but this was just a super quick blueprint that I mocked up for you just so that you can see that this is possible for you. So there you have it, a simple yet effective way of adding animation into your Unreal Engine project. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. There are many different ways to create rotoscope animations and to import sprite animations into your project. For instance, Unreal Engine does actually have sprite actions, but they don't allow you as much control as the method I've shared with you today. And I've learnt through the comments of my previous video that you can actually create rotoscope animation through using Blender and other 3D softwares, which I think is super cool and definitely worth a look at. But I personally have been really enjoying this particular process in creating rotoscope animation and getting it into the game. I feel it gives me full control over the visuals of it, um, the speed, things that I want to add that aren't necessarily in my reference footage, and I'm always happy with the end result. It really does remind me of the traditional frame-by-frame -frame animations that I have initially been inspired by. So. For me, it's a win. Saying all of that though, if there's a different way that you incorporate your animations into Unreal Engine, or if you think that this process can be improved, then please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to learn together with you. That's the whole point of why I do these types of videos. And I definitely need to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of the, the absolute love that I got on my how to make a music video in Unreal Engine. I did not expect it to blow up in such a way and I think it's absolutely awesome that there's so many people that want to use game engines to create things other than games. For so long I've been a lover of film and video games and I was just waiting for them to merge and I feel like now is the time. I know that 
it's been used such a way for a while, but yeah, I'm rambling. <laughs> it was just so awesome to see so many people who um, wanted to share their own projects, wanted to express how it had inspired them. It makes me very happy, so thank you, thank you very much. And it meant that the channel has now grown enough to get a thank you button, so you can say thank you down here if you want to. You don't have to, but I've been waiting for that button, so thank you! The YouTube has been very, very good to the channel lately. Talking of supporting the channel, I want to say a big thank you to my Patreons who make Make this all possible. Thanks to Cullen Williams, No Way Jose, Gaming with Malachi 79, Ip196, Lewis Cruz, Yu Hang Lyo, Luke Sugars, and Salvatore Merrifield. And I'm very sorry if I butchered anyone's names. <laughs> if you want to catch more of this face, then join me every Thursday at 8:30 p.m. BST over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash eggs to see me play video games. I will sometime in May be doing a game dev creative project Q&A over on Twitch, which I'll then cut down and pop onto YouTube. Uh, I had a lot of questions asked of me and I would love to help as many of you as possible. But also, of course, I don't know everything. Uh, I think we can help each other in that way though. We can build a community that can help each other and just make cool, creative things together. That's all I've ever wanted and I feel like it's coming true. So I'm very happy. How about you? Oh, that rhymes. It'd be very cool. <laughs> that didn't rhyme. Okay, have a lovely day or evening. I'll see you in the next video and bye! Don't worry, I'm like, high five!